Kamala Harris is sinking in Michigan, and that could have devastating consequences for her electoral college strategy. According to Axios, a Democrat representative, Lisa Slotkin, warned donors last week that internal polling for her Senate campaign shows Vice President Kamala Harris is, quote, underwater in Michigan. So internal polls tend to be more accurate than the public-facing polls. First of all, we don't always know who funds these public polls. We don't always know what their intentions are. Sometimes the intention is to shape public opinion as much as it is to actually accurately reflect it. And oftentimes these polls are meant to put pressure on politicians. So you can't always trust the public facing polls. Whereas campaigns, they have every um, intention to get their internal polls right because that's how they win. So if internal polls show Kamala Harris underwater, that is not good news at all. It's not just according to Axios. We now have footage of Elisa Slotkin saying this. This is a I, I, I'm not feeling my best right now about where we are on Kamala Harris in a place like Michigan right now. We have her underwater in our polling. Um, uh, yeah, so their own internal polling has her underwater, but it's not just that. Um, if we take a look down here, 538's average of polls has Harris up by 2.4 points in Michigan. So it sounds like, you know, Kamala Harris is doing well. She's ahead 2.4 points, but... Trump has a history of overperforming his polls. In 2016, he overperformed the Michigan polls by 3.8 points. So if that happens, he's going to win Michigan, even though Harris is ahead, allegedly, by 2.4. In um, 2020, Biden led by 4.2 points, and he only won by 2.8, which means Trump overperformed by 1.4. So if we have a repeat of 2020, if the 538 average is right, then Kamala Harris keeps Michigan. But not only are the internal polls showing Kamala Harris underwater, the New York Times-Siena College poll, which has a smaller than miss than a lot of these other polls, only has Kamala Harris up by one. So if we see a miss similar to 2020, which was a smaller miss— but if we see one similar to 2020, Trump takes Michigan. But the best news for Trump yet comes from Atlas Intel. Atlas Intel was the most accurate pollster in 2020. They were one of the most accurate in 2016. And they released this yesterday. And I'm sorry for those of you, you know, who watched my video yesterday. This will be a repeat. But you'll notice they have Kamala Harris up 2.4 in North Carolina, up 2.8 in Nevada. But everywhere else, Trump is winning. And then in Michigan, they have Trump up by 3.4 points. That's that is well outside of the margin of error. They are saying that Trump is hands down the likely favorite to win Michigan. Now, I love polls like this that sort of throw you off for a loop because it suggests, you know, if they show Kamala Harris up in North Carolina, it, not only does Atlas Intel have a history of being accurate, but it also suggests that they're not actively putting their thumb on the scale for a specific candidate. And when it comes to North Carolina, I think there could be reverse coattails, right? Because Mark Robinson is under a lot of heat, under a lot of pressure, a lot of controversy there because of CNN. And so there could potentially be reverse coattails, and that could be what we're seeing in that poll. So Atlas Intel, they have the smallest miss in 2020. You know, they missed by an average of 2.2 uh, points. Trafalgar uh, was very close behind, 2.6. Rasmussen very close behind. Again, just bringing this up, the New York Times poll only showing Harris up one in Michigan. Not very good news when you consider on the low end, Trump overperformed polls by 1.4 points. And on the high end, you know, up to 3.8, 6.2, 7.2. So not good news for the Harris campaign at all. Well, Qantas Insights, as if all of that bad news wasn't enough, Qantas Insights just released their brand new model. And what I love about this model is they are combining three different data points. So the first data point is party affiliation, party registration. And because of the Gallup poll, the Gallup uh, data dump that came out last week, we know that for the first time in decades— more people are either registered as Republican or identify as Republican than Democrats. For the first time in decades, Republicans have a lead in party identification. So that's data point number one. Data point number two are, you can see in these swing states, how, how many people are requesting mail-in ballots, and you can track that by party. And you can also see how many people are returning their mail-in ballots. And again, you can track that by party. And Republicans have a huge advantage. So that's data point number two. And then data point number three are the polls. So what Qantas Insights does 
is they combine all of this together and they're showing that Trump if all if these trends hold from now till election day, Trump wins Wisconsin by 2.2 points. Uh, Trump wins Michigan by 1.4. Trump wins Pennsylvania by 2.5. And in fact, as if that wasn't enough, if you take a look at the overall Midwest, so not any state-specific poll, but if you just measure throughout the Midwest, um, regardless of state, Trump today in 2024 would get 52% of the vote compared to 2020 when he got 50.1% and then 2016 when he got 49.2. So not only is Trump polling better in the Midwest today, he is actually over that 50% threshold. He's getting over half of voters in the Midwest. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Trump truly does not only wins Michigan, but wins it by over 50%, you know, a, a huge outcome. And then it is just bad news for Kamala Harris, not only this internal poll leaking. I think that was the worst piece of news because, like I said earlier in the video, those internal polls hold the most weight. But Nate Silver, you know, I am subscribed to his model. He updates his model every single day. And his latest updates are so, you know— dangerous for Harris that even Newsweek ran a headline this morning, just this morning. Nate Silver, quote, nervous about Kamala Harris's chances in two swing states. Now, to be clear, those two swing states are not Michigan. They don't include Michigan. It's actually Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. So um, really, really damaging news there. Oh, wait, there's more. Real clear politics. And that's why the whole point of this video is Yes, it goes back to the internal polls in Michigan, but now Kamala Harris is getting pummeled by sources left and right. Qantas Insights, Atlas Intel, Nate Silver, and now Real Clear Politics. They have officially declared Minnesota to be a swing state. So according to Real Clear Politics, every state in gray here is too close to call. So they, Real Clear Politics averages their electoral map daily. And uh, before, you know, they just had Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, all, all, all the states you would consider the swing states, right? They had them gray. Just this morning, they turned Minnesota gray. Just this morning, they essentially announced Minnesota is a swing state. Now, combine that with the fact that Atlas Intel, that poll that I mentioned earlier, right? They uh, did North Carolina, Georgia, Arizona, Nevada, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. Well, Atlas Intel yesterday announced that they were going to do a poll in Virginia and a poll in Minnesota. Gee, so within 24 hours, we have Atlas Intel announcing a poll in Minnesota. We have Real Clear Politics announcing that Minnesota is a swing state. By the way, Atlas Intel, from what I can find, they did not poll in Virginia or Minnesota, either in 2020 or in 2016, because those were, you know, considered safe states for where they were. So, again, really bad news for Kamala Harris. None of these are, you know, the final nail in the coffin, but there is... Uh, gonna be a straw that breaks the Kamala's, Kamal, Camel's back, Kamala's, Kamala's back. There, there is gonna be a straw that breaks it. Even MSNBC, Steve Kornacki is throwing cold water on Kamala Harris's campaign, specifically when you take a look at the demographic breakdowns. We ask a basic question of Hispanic voters, which party do you more identify with? 37% now say Republicans, 49% say Democrats. But again, look at how this has shifted in just the last dozen years. In 2012, this was a 41-point advantage for the Democrats. It has come all the way down to 12 points, Kristen, a 29-point drop uh, in terms of uh, that gap there uh, on uh, which party Hispanics identify with in just 12 years. Like I said, uh, you know, the Hispanic vote isn't going to make or break this election, but there will be a singular straw. There will be many straws that break the camel lala's back. Um, now, in Michigan, they have an Arab population, and the Arab population comprises, composes about 2.1% of the voting population in Michigan, 2.1% of the voting population in Michigan. Well, according to Reuters, some Muslim Americans are moving to Jill Stein and potential blow to Kamala Harris. What they found in that study is that 40% of Arab voters are now saying that they're going to vote for Jill Stein. So 
That doesn't necessarily help Trump in that it doesn't add votes for Trump, but it does take away votes for Harris. So in a state like Michigan, which is very tight, very competitive, where the Arab population is 2.1% of the voting population, and then up to 40% of that, essentially almost you know, a single percentage point is going to be taken away from Kamala Harris. Sure, it won't be added Trump, uh, but taken away from Kamala Harris. That is huge news in Michigan. So real clear politics. If the election was held today, what would it look like? Well, according to them, uh, Trump would win. Trump fans would win even today. Just based on the polling data we have today, Trump Vance 281 to Harris Walls 257, you'll notice that Pennsylvania finally is red. They've finally added in those new polls. By the way, so yesterday, Tim Walls had a campaign appearance at the Minnesota-Michigan game, and I aired footage of Tim Walls, you know, going through the stadium before the game and people heckling him, yelling, go Trump. Uh, some some of you uh, were really eagle-eyed, and uh, let me know in the comments. It looks like he's actually flipping off people. So here's the footage I showed yesterday, and let me see if you see the f flipping off. I, I I think that's what I'm seeing. Yeah, Trump 2024, baby! Yeah, not a good look for him. And also, there was footage right before the game. Now, I am not a body language expert, but... Keep a close eye to where his hands go. I, I just don't think it's a good look. And like I said, I think the dude's kind of a creep. Are you excited for Michigan to beat Minnesota today? <laughs> I'm excited to be in the big house. I'm excited to watch this incredible game. I'm more excited to see young people excited about their future and getting ready to vote. Yeah. That left hand, right? Really awkward timing. That's all I'll say about that. So Michigan. Um, the internal polls show Kamala Harris underwater, according to Slotkin. Well, the RCP average has Harris ahead by 1.4 points. But again, take a look at this box I put in red, rectangled in red. On this day in 2020, Biden was ahead 5 points. On this day in 2016, Clinton was ahead by 5.3. Trump famously went on to win in 2016. Um I think we all know what happened in 2020, but regardless of that, you know, Harris is ahead 1.4 points. Again, what happened in 2016? Trump overperformed by 3.8 points. What happened in 2020? Trump overperformed by 1.4 points. So not good news in Michigan. And then uh, again, you combine that with the Hispanic vote, as they were talking about on MSNBC. You combine that with the Arab vote, as they were talking about on Reuters. Just not a good look for her at all. Now, it's not just Michigan, though. Pennsylvania is, is similarly, uh, if the election was held today, it would for sure be for Trump. You can look at the RCP average. Trump is officially ahead now, 0.2 points in Michigan. And that's exactly why, you know, the RCP map has officially called not, you know, I, I get these are projections, but if the election was held today, this is what their bet would be. Um, but again, Trump ahead by 0.2 points in 2020, Biden was ahead by 6.3 on this exact day. In 2016, Clinton was ahead 2.4 points on this exact day. So great news for Trump. Wisconsin, which is the state that uh, Nate Silver is worried about, Harris is only ahead by 0.8 points. Take a look. Uh, 2016, on this exact same day, Clinton was ahead 4.7. Biden was ahead 5.5. Again, um, in 2016, Trump overperformed his Wisconsin polls by 7.2 points. So Harris is only ahead by 0.8. Trump overperformed Wisconsin polls 7.2. In 2016, the polls were closer, but Trump still overperformed them by 6.1 points. So if Trump, you know, even if they improve the same amount that they did from 2016 to 2020, you know, 7.2 points to 6.1 points, you know, let's say Trump only overperforms by five. Well, he would still win Wisconsin. Minnesota, which again, like I showed you earlier, um, uh, Real Clear Politics has officially declared Minnesota a battleground state. Well, that's interesting because according to the Real Clear Politics polling, you know, Harris is well outside the margin of error, a 4.7% lead. 
But what's interesting here is that um, the highest quality poll here is Rasmussen. They only have Harris ahead 0.3. Then a, a lot of these other polls, you know, are lower quality and they were much earlier in the month. And then you have Atlas Intel announcing that they're going to do a poll in Virginia, do a poll in Minnesota. I mean, it, it's just not good news for them. Last but not least, Virginia. Now, you will notice uh, we don't have any data for how Virginia was trending on this day in 2020 or in 2016, um, yet, yet um, Atlas Intel a a is, you know, going to do a poll in Virginia. So that, that right there is very interesting. So with all of that being said, um, let's say Trump on the low end, let's just say he overperforms on the low end. Um, that means he would take Michigan, he would take Wisconsin. So just to clarify, if if the election was held today and these polls were exactly right, there was no, we just trusted the polls, there was no polling miss, they're 100% accurate. Uh, if the election was held today, Trump Vance at 281, Harris Walls at 257, again, the magic number is 270, so Trump Vance would have an 11-point cushion. But on the low end, let's say Trump overperforms his polls on the low end, that would mean that he would take Michigan, Wisconsin. Uh, that would put Trump Vance at 306, uh, Harris Walls at 232. Now, let's say he overperforms the polls on the high end. And even then, on, on, on the high end, it goes as high as the polling miss here. It goes as high as 7.2 percentage points. Now, I want to be conservative. I, I, I want to be jaded. I don't want to, you know, overpromise, underdeliver. And, you know, I, I am not a prediction expert. That's not what I claim to be. That's not what I want to be. But let's just say Trump overperforms on the higher end. But still, let's be cautious. Let's just say he overperforms by five points instead of 7.2. What would that map look like? Well, he would win uh, Minnesota and Virginia. That would put Trump Vance at 329, Harris Walls at 209. That would be huge, 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 huge. But there's actually one more map that is a little more shocking. If we, let's say we have a repeat of 2016. And what I mean by that is sort of the shock style win. Like not only does Trump overperform, but he wins a state. Let's say, you know, he overperforms. Not not only did Trump overperform in 2016, but he really, you know, no one really thought Pennsylvania was within his grasp, and he got that. I think the state this time, if Trump has like a moment where people go, "Whoa," I think Trump could actually win New Jersey. That would put Trump Vance at 343, Harris Walls at 195. So you know, a lot uh, was made of Trump's visit to Long Island, New York. Um, and my theory on that, you know, Trump may be holding a rally in New York. You know, there's the long shot that maybe the Trump campaign is actually trying to flip New York. But, you know, that media market bleeds over, extends over into Pennsylvania and New Jersey. And when I've been looking at these New Jersey mail-in ballots, sorry, someone's calling me. Um, when I've been looking at these New Jersey mail-in requests, Republicans are overperforming, Democrats are underperforming, and then when you look at the returns of early mail-in ballots in New Jersey, again, Republicans are overperforming. I get we don't have COVID this time, but the signs are there, you know, and even if, you know, even if Trump doesn't win New Jersey, if he does have a 2016-style surprise up his sleeve— I think New Jersey could be very, very tight. I'm, I'm talking like fewer than four points. Um, none of this is an official prediction. I will give an official prediction probably next week, at the very latest, two weeks after that. Um, but I was just looking at the data today from the internal polling numbers being leaked to the MSNBC segment to Atlas Intel announcing that they're going to poll Minnesota and Virginia. It's just... It's not looking good for the Harris campaign. It, on paper, you would want to be the Harris campaign right now, on paper. But when you actually take a look at the fundamentals at, behind these numbers, and then you take a look at where the momentum is going, and then you, when you take a look at everything holistically, things are not looking good. But as always, that is my analysis, my commentary. That is what's going on from my point of view. And I would love to hear what you guys, what you all think about all of this. Uh, someone told me not to say guys. I just... 
and I'm not calling you out specifically. Someone in a previous video got upset and was like, why do you always say guys? Like, you have female viewers too. Where I'm from, and uh, I, I, I live in the South, but guys here is colloquially the same as y'all, you all. It's, it's sort of a non-gendered term. I know there are guys and gals, but like where I am anyways, most people just say you guys and it's you, you all, y'all, it's everyone. So if I say guys, I don't mean any offense, but what do you all think about all of this from the internal polls supposedly leaked from Slotkin who says Kamala Harris is underwater in Michigan to, you know, uh, Real clear politics officially declaring Minnesota a toss-up state today. I mean, who would have thought? But, you know, Tim Walls is pretty unpopular there, and for whatever reason, Kamala Harris picked him. Uh, if you haven't already, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. I know it's a simple thing to ask, but it really does help me in the algorithm to reach more viewers like you. Be sure to smash that subscribe button and to check out one of these videos.